Are there any bootleg LPs from, from Snake Finger that you know? I can't think so. I, I can barely afford to put out a real LP, <laughs> let alone a bootleg. Well, I, I know there are a lot of bootlegs from the residents. Do, do you get to see them, uh, Hardy? I, I see some of them. Um, I haven't cared for any of the ones I've seen. Um, but, uh, you know, those things happen. Yeah. I, I always hope that they're going to be decently recorded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't think... The re do the residents mind it, that there are bootlegs? I don't think they particularly care. Yeah. I, I don't think... think they, I, well, I don't think they think too much about it. I mean, people know that what bootlegs are. They know that bootlegs uh, are generally low quality and don't represent necessarily an artist at his best. Mm. But, uh, you know, I've, I've heard, I have heard bootlegs. Yeah. Uh, some artists that are actually quite good. But do, do people send bootlegs to the residents? Um, the, ones, the ones that I have, I have had to either trade for or buy. Oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, that most of them have come out of Europe. Um, I have, I know there's, I must hate to mention it by name, but there's, there's one, the Third Secret of Fatima or something, which is pretends to be part three of the Mole Trilogy or something that is, uh, was from Milan, and it's just really horrible. <laughs> it's really horrible. But... Uh, Now I, I have I I have a collection of residents records and unfortunately I have to collect the bootlegs whenever <laughs> I do run into them <laughs> as well. Uh, you know, this is the consequences. Of yeah. it, I suppose. Is it? Do you think it's more it's easier to make a bootleg in in Europe than in America? Yeah, I've never seen an American one. Oh. Uh, all the ones I've seen are from Europe. Uh, I don't know why. I don't think it's any di more difficult. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Uh, Maybe there's more of a market in Europe for them. They're working on a project that I can't really talk very much about, but uh, it concerns Eskimo, and this is uh, an ar arrangement on some of Eskimo. It's unfinished once again. So it, this is a, uh, an 87 or 86 rearrangement? No, this is a new... Well, this is an 87 arrangement, and uh, yeah... Okay, eight and a quarter. Is that uh, the exact title of the song? Yes, that's the exact title. It's uh, taken from Fellini's film Eight and a Half, but it's lots of different bits of music put together, so it's called Eight and a Quarter. Yeah, and um, the thing which amazed me from this LP was that uh, you had so many difficult styles. The, the songs are... Even there's a more disco-like song, and uh, it's not the well, it's not the Snake Finger as we knew. Well, I think uh, one has to keep changing, and one has to keep keep uh, getting. Can you ones come? Can sure. you? Yeah. One needs to. Keep or you you can push the microphone. As well. Gotcha. So. One, one keeps to, needs to keep getting at, at one's influences, and I like lots of different kinds of music, so I try and get as many in there as, as I like, you know, yeah. purely for my enjoyment. Yeah, but uh, before that, you, most of your LPs were, you had uh, one LP with only blues songs, and, uh, well, the old stuff was, was a bit different. Yeah, the, the blues thing, that was just a one-time history lesson that I wanted to do. It was, that's all it was, a history lesson. And it was, it was at a time when I, when, you know, I thought it basically needed something to happen like that. It definitely needed, it needed to be uh, told the way, it, the way it was back then. But, but that was, as I say, one history lesson, and I enjoyed doing it, but it certainly wasn't my main... Uh, my main thrust in life. I certainly don't want to be a, some sort of teacher, mm -hmm. I, although I had tons of fun doing it. Yeah. So uh, what can we expect, uh, because you're playing in Amsterdam uh, this Saturday, what can we expect then? Well, I have a really super band. They're very, very, very good musicians. And uh, I have Eric Feldman from Captain Beefheart's band on uh, keyboards. 
and uh, John Ryan on drums and Ben Guy on bass. They're very, very good musicians. And we'll be playing some stuff from the new record and some stuff from the old records and uh, none of the history of the blues. I'm afraid that's history. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how you di already did two concerts, I think, in Holland? Yes, yeah. We, no, one. Oh, one. one. Concert in Holland. Did it? Uh, yes, where? it was real good. Yeah? It was in The Hague. So this was a, a real fine jingle. I, I, well, we already have it since the, the record came out. But I heard that in America there is also a sort of disco net mix from, from this uh, song. Oh. Oh, go, yes. Go ahead. Well, there is, yeah. Um, someone took the, uh, the, Dutch, the Dutch version and yet re-edited it and remixed it again. Uh, from the CD, I think, from the Torso CD, and uh, added some new drums to it, and uh, added some of Billie Jean to it, and like really made it like super novelty, and it's been re-released out to clubs, and uh, which once again is getting it played in the clubs again. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's. Now there's something for the collector to look for. Yeah, but I think it's only for this special club of DJs. Yeah, it is. It's, it's a, a subscription service. Yeah, so if you want to buy it, or if you ever can get a hold of on it, you you have to pay 100 guilders at least, I think. Bec and I think it's an LP with with six songs, six other four. mixes, four other mixes. Four, I think. It's a two. It's a two. Uh, two twelve inch. No, maybe it is six. I don't really remember. I've well. got a copy if anybody wants to try to <laughs> well, it offer. It's, <laughs> a bit, it's a pity you haven't uh, taken it with you, or at least a recording of it, because uh, I think the people w would be very anxious to hear it. I wouldn't even consider it, or I could have, real <laughs> easily. Uh, but I know that uh, I know there's some going to be some coming to the country, because I think that the deal that was worked out with uh, Torso was that they're going to pay them in copies of the record. Oh, yes, but I don't think uh, Torso will sell these records, <coughs> knowing Ruth. <laughs> <laughs> Probably so not. Is, is the, the, this 12-inch remix only out on the Torso label, or is it also out on Ralph Records? No, it's only out on Torso. And uh, Torso um, sold the rights also to, I think, Spain. And right. I saw in Spain uh, a Spanish version uh pressing of it and i think there was there is probably a greek pressing as well or is that only from I, I don't know um i think it's licensed into greek i don't know greece i don't know if if the uh if there's a greece separate pressing or not mm. then yeah, there could be i should get a copy if there is <laughs> Do you have all the foreign pressings of all the residence records? Yeah, yeah. They're all in the sort of uh, archie archives of, uh, yeah. of the Cryptic Corporation. Yeah, we have quite a collection, actually. <laughs> we should open a museum someday. <laughs> well, there, I think the, the residents are in, in the Modern Art Museum. Well, the videos are in the museum. I don't know about any records. No, 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 no. But that's the only thing of the residence which is in the museum. Right, the which will be, by the way, released. The video has been released here, I think, next week. Yeah, that's what what I wanted to talk about. That, and that's a special compilation a video. Um, yeah, it's pretty much all the the residence videos, the ones that were on tour, uh, all compiled into one one video. What do you mean, the the ones? Well, in most places on the on the tour, the videos were shown before the show. Yeah, and it's it's that plus a little more. Um, so that the people can th those videos people saw before the concert, they can buy. Right, it's a uh, man's world and the one minute ones and mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. Do the residents still make a video video clips? Um, yeah, they haven't made one this year, but they, they want to, you know, a lot of times it's just a matter of figuring out how to finance it, mm -hmm. it's very expensive, but, yeah. uh, um, 
But there isn't a video clip f from uh, Kolaja, for instance, or from no from Hitterojek. No, <coughs> um, no. If there's anything, it will be from uh, what they're currently working on, and because uh, they're working on a new album now. Yeah, and so. Um, But once again, I still don't know where the where the money is going to come from for it. But like Kurosawa, Fellini, and Stanley Kubrick, great people have very big difficulties financing their films. <laughs> so the residents also have difficulties. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, the next tracks which are, we are going to listen. Can you give some more information about it? These are two more that were on this cassette that the residents gave me. Uh, one of them sounds like uh, it might be somewhat uh, coming off of the big bubble period. Oh, yes. Um, the other one sounds like just like a beginning track for for something. Okay. So, but this is some older material, not 87. This is 87. Oh, still 87. Yeah, everything I have is 87. Okay. I wouldn't bring you anything other than the latest. All right. <laughs> You you were just talking about uh, the music the residents like to write uh, for these old instruments. Right. Is it uh, when will the residents r or not only write the music but also uh, play the music? Well, as far well, it's played primarily by punching cards. Yeah. And whether they'll actually punch the cards depends really upon the amount of commitment to the technology. It would mean learning how to punch the cards. Mm. It's possible that it would be better to have someone who's experienced in doing that yeah. to punch it from sheet music. Um, which, once again, is an interesting thing back to the to the Apple yeah. Macintosh computer because the computer actually prints out <laughs> the music that's put into it. So uh, it's actually possible to just give a score over to... Uh, you know, to someone to punch it. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, uh, I want, I wanted to mention that the software on the Macintosh is, uh, that's being run on the next track that you're getting ready to, to play there is called Studio Sessions, which is, I mean, this is actually coming off of a Macintosh computer from a speaker that's plugged into the output of the computer. This, this is, <coughs> has nothing to do with MIDI. It is not driving <coughs> any other instruments at all. This is totally coming out of the computer itself without any other instruments being involved in any way. The computer is just sitting on a desk. <laughs> and uh, this is a piece that the residents have been, have been working on. Mm -hmm. And they're using it for like a compositional technique. The quality is still pretty low, uh, but they're using it and will probably be re-recording some of this or things similar to this that they're writing on it. So if you want to play that. Are they planning a new uh, European tour? Oh, yeah. As a matter of fact, that's another reason I'm here. It's, uh, they're going to be running their 1989 tour based in Amsterdam. Uh, so the European tour will be 89, and uh, I'm sure they'll be back here. In fact, probably they'll be at the, uh, the music theater uh, in 89. And, uh, but... Since that's a while off, I highly recommend that everyone be at the Milky Way Saturday night, where I'll be to see Snakefinger. Yeah. Okay. So, um, and and what about the the mole show? What has happened to the mole show? Do you know something about that? No. Only the residents know. Well, I don't know what you mean. Uh, the mole show was finished. Um, so. Everybody's waiting, still waiting for part three of the Mold Oh, part again. three. Oh, part three. Well, why do you say part three? <laughs> 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 no, I don't know a thing about part three either. I, uh, I know it's. They talk about it like mm. it's something they're going to do. Yeah. But uh, no, I don't know anything about it. I think this is in there with uh, <laughs> part part four of the famous composers, <laughs> American composers. Oh, I think that will happen. I think all of it will happen if they live long enough. <laughs> <coughs> okay.